It is a place where extraordinary things seem commonplace. There's only one India, Mark Twain wrote, a country of a hundred nations. The land of dreams and romance. The one land all desire to see. On a world tour, Twain traveled throughout India. He saw a land of remarkable treasures of human creativity built across millennia. India is a land of colorful customs and fascinating events that are among the largest and most spectacular in the world. Of festivals that enliven the earth, and celebrations that paint the sky. But the most valuable treasure cannot be seen at all. It lies hidden in India's silent spirituality, making her a mystic land of meditation, contemplation, and enlightenment. continued in India for thousands of years to understand the great secrets of life beyond our material world, striving to elevate the human spirit. Seeking to know not how to conquer the world, but how to live in peace. How to understand life and life beyond death. Age-old philosophies have given rise to a gentle way of life that gives space to all other forms of life. India is a land of timeless traditions where worship and daily living are interwoven. It is also a land of lonely journeys made by people of remarkable devotion called yogis. To reach a deeper understanding of existence, they willingly leave the comforts of home and family and endure the hardships of nature. They develop amazing powers of body and mind through yoga and self-discipline.
their efforts to share insights with others can lead to great stories of courage, sacrifice, and wisdom. One such story has inspired millions. The story of a boy who took an extraordinary journey through the wonders of mystic India. His name was Neil Kant, and he was only 11 years old. But he had long studied the Hindu Vedas, one of the world's oldest scriptures. For one so young, he was remarkably enlightened in the ways of his faith. On this night, he resolved to do something extraordinary. All along, his family had known and accepted that one day he would leave his home to become a yogi. On June 29th of 1792, he set out alone and barefoot to walk thousands of miles carrying nothing. No one could have imagined that the journey of a young boy would help reform India in the late 18th century and awaken others to loving, respectful ways of life. He would have to leave behind all that was familiar in his hometown of Ayodhya and walk into the unknown world beyond. So that he couldn't be followed, he left the village in a way no one would expect. A dangerous way. He entered the river Seriu at full flood, not knowing where he would emerge or if he would emerge at all. Surviving the river strengthened Neil Kant's determination, which he marked in Indian tradition by tying his hair into a knot, a declaration of firm resolve. His first steps would turn over time into a journey that would last seven years and cross nearly 8,000 miles. an incredible adventure through a vast land of great variety. India is one of the world's largest countries, a single nation as large as all of Europe. In Nilkant's journey across the length and breadth of India, he would pass through nearly every kind of habitat on earth, all contained in this one land. In the north, he would climb the roof of the world, the highest mountains on earth, called in Sanskrit, the Himalayas, the home of snow. In these treacherous icy mountains, he could face freezing temperatures below zero. 
a stark contrast to the 120 degrees in India's scorching, waterless deserts, and to the country's dense tropical forests, including Cherrapunji, one of the world's rainiest areas. He would walk along the largest peninsula in the world, a coastline more than 4,000 miles long. He would see vast, fertile plains which support a population that today represents one-sixth of all the people in the world. Nilkan's odyssey will also take him through an ancient cradle of civilization where advanced human settlements arose more than 8,000 years ago. Recent discoveries suggest that a great culture had developed in India even before those of Egypt or Mesopotamia. Across the ages, Indian minds helped drive human progress. From farming the earth to mapping the skies, India has made important contributions to astronomy, geometry and mathematics, including the invention of the zero and the decimal system. Medicine and surgery advance here, and India's science of longevity, called Ayurveda, contains the knowledge of a hundred thousand medicinal herbs. Inspiring concepts and practices such as yoga and non-violence have influenced human life everywhere. To share these values with others, Nilkanth first walked northwest from his home in Ayodhya toward the region where India's holiest river, the Ganges, is born. Wherever he travelled, the sight of such a young yogi, all alone, surprised people. Are you lost, child? You should be at home, not out here in the forest. I am at home. It is others who are lost. But where exactly are you going? Wherever I can help people. Impressed by such an answer, they urged the boy to come that night to the nearby town of Haridwar, an important place of pilgrimage. Nilkant would witness the Aarti, a ceremony of lamps held every evening for thousands of years to worship the waters of the Ganges. Haridwar is also a site of the largest festival on earth, a month-long Purna Kum, held every 12 years and attended by as many as 70 million pilgrims. This night, the chief priest interrupted the rites when he noticed the child yogi. We've never seen such a young yogi. Who are you and where are you from? My name is Nilkand. I have no home. I only have a journey. Then why don't you make your home here, in this holy city? My journey is like a cloud. Because there is thirst everywhere, I just cannot stop moving.
Following the traditional ways of his land, Newcomb performed morning prayers and devotions no matter where he was. India is a land of intriguing rituals. From birth to death, Indians perform special ceremonies to infuse everyday living with deeper meanings. A young child is weighed using sugar crystals, an expression of pure, sweet love. Brides decorate their hands with herbal dye before the day of marriage, a symbolic appeal for prosperity and fertility. While marriage begins with a colourful ceremony of seven pledges for lifetime commitment. The final rites confirm that death is not the end, but a passage to the next life. It was death that Nilkan faced when he reached Sripur, a mountain village famed for a shrine called Kamleshwa Mat. Beneath the peaceful appearance, a fear that a lion was terrorizing the villagers, that the boy should seek safety inside his shrine, but Nilkan declined. Please tell me, is your shrine safe and protected from death? Can your doors or walls really stop death? No, the truth is, nothing can stop death. If nothing can stop death, then why should one fear it? Running from danger will make us fearful, but facing it will make us fearless. The priest was intrigued by the boy, but if he refused to come inside, there was little the priest could do. The boy was likely doomed. Nilkant had already spent a long time moving through the forest, and he had grown comfortable with wild animals. Nilkant faced the lion calmly, resolutely. Perhaps the lion sensed this lack of fear. He didn't attack at all. The lion left and peace returned. The villagers were greatly relieved and they urged the boy to stay in Sripur. What they needed, Nilkant explained, was not him, but inner strength to rise above fear. The great fear of death and the small fears that disturb daily life. In such villages and towns, a sea of faces greeted Nilkant. Faces of a nation that remains today one of the world's most diverse. With every shade of skin, 
every expression of human aspiration and every way of life. Some of the earliest democratic traditions arose in India, rooted in the teachings of the Vedas, that all people can live together, that there can be unity in diversity. Today, India is home to a billion people of different religions, traditions and backgrounds. It is the only country where 18 separate languages have arisen, each with a different lettering and more than 1,600 dialects. To Nilkant, however, the greatest meanings were not expressed in words but in the unspoken language of reverence for all life. In November of 1792, as winter approached, Nilkant reached the town of Badrinath in the Himalayas. The place would soon be engulfed in snow, and the entire village was about to leave for the warmer plains below. The temple priests invited Nilkant to join them. But the boy said he was following the ancient yogic tradition of entering the Himalayas to meditate on life. The priest warned him that he would freeze in the mountain cold, that he would never return alive. Worried for the boy's life, the priest asked, how will he find his way, and with no warm clothing, how will he ever survive? Nilkant replied, Faith. Faith shall help me survive. And faith shall find my way. Completely alone, Nilkanth entered one of Earth's harshest places at its deadliest season. Before him in the Himalayas loomed 29 of the 30 highest peaks in the world, including the great Mount Everest, more than 29,000 feet high. Yet, great yogis of India have learned to survive the fierce cold here. Scientific research at Harvard and elsewhere has documented that advanced forms of meditation and yoga can alter the rate of metabolism and regulate body temperature making yogis less vulnerable to extreme conditions that could be fatal to ordinary people. For months, Nilkant heard no human voice. As winter descended, he had only the powers of yoga to sustain him. Nilkant crossed treacherous mountain passes to behold the most sacred peak of the Hindus, Mount Kailash. Shiva. 
He walked onto the shores of Mount Sarova, one of the highest lakes on earth at 15,000 feet and the source of India's four great rivers. In the Annapurna range, Nilkanth crossed the deepest gorge on earth. Cut 22,000 feet deep by the river Kali Gandaki. High in the mountains, Nilkanth reached Mukthinath, an ancient temple of Lord Vishnu. 108 water spouts encircle it, representing 108 Hindu names for God. Nilkanth's physical journey was always strengthened by a journey within. Daily yoga and meditation were a vital part of his life and remained so as he grew older. They helped him gain insights into himself, into nature and into all that exists. After four years in the Himalayas, Nilkan walked eastward to share his knowledge with others. Crowds gathered in temple towns to seek his wisdom. And Nilkan, in turn, sought to understand life and philosophies in each region by visiting many holy places along the way. No other nation has more temples, monuments and palaces than India. Across the ages, an architecture developed that created spectacular buildings. Engineered of massive stone pillars and domes that will last thousands of years, they combine enormous strength and delicate beauty. Exquisite artwork designed according to ancient Indian books of sculpture has been hand carved by countless craftsmen over the ages. The entire countryside is adorned with elaborate and elegant monuments with palaces and impregnable fortresses of stone. With structures born of many faiths, India is a tapestry of temples, churches, mosques, and pagodas. Over millennia, diverse traditions of art have flourished together, creating a mosaic of beauty perhaps unequaled in any other land. Among India's architectural marvels are the temples of Kajuraho, 
built before the 13th century, featuring a beautiful combination of thousands of sculptures, designs, space and void. The Taj Mahal, called one of the seven wonders of the world and widely considered the most perfectly proportioned monument on earth. The Stupa of Sanchi, built more than 2,000 years ago to honor Buddha, it is one of the most important Buddhist sites. Amritsa, a priceless temple completely covered in gold. And the marvel of Kailas, the world's largest monolithic monument, which took 150 years to carve from a hill of solid stone. Beyond temples and shrines, Nilkan also cross the rainforests of Assam in the northeast. As usual, he slept undisturbed in yogic posture. He continued across the wilds of the Sundarbans at the mouth of the Ganges. Nearly five years to the day of leaving home, Nilkant reached Jagannath Puri in eastern India. Here, the regional king, Mukundeva, met Nilkan and invited him to the festival of chariots, Rathyatra. The massive crowds and gigantic chariots of Jagannath Puri gave birth to the English word Chagannath. A 2,500-year-old event that draws over a million people each year from across India. Festivals in India are expressions of spiritual joy, sometimes conveyed through the chanting of Sanskrit mantras. The new year is marked by Annakut, the festival of food, an offering of thousands of vegetarian dishes. Diwali, the festival of light, commemorates the triumph of good over evil, of light over darkness. The whole of India seems filled with lamps, firecrackers and happiness. The festival of colors, called Huli, is an opportunity to express joy and drench a friend by throwing colored water or powder. In India, graceful gesture, a grand festival, or the majestic gate of a temple is an expression of devotion. In the south, Nilkant entered the famed temple of Rameshwaram, built in the 12th century with one of the world's longest stone corridors of nearly a mile. His travels had shown him that India's people were suffering because of cultural divisions. 
He encouraged all he encountered to overcome the differences that divided them and to live in harmony. For the next two years, Nilkant traveled around the southern tip of India, a region famed as the birthplace of Indian classical dance and music. Dancers spend decades mastering Bharat Natyam, in which every slight gesture of the head, eyes, neck, hands and body is charged with meaning. It is an art performed continuously for 2,000 years and honored in sculptures carved on the walls of ancient shrines. From the temple towns of South India, Nilkant traveled to the backwaters of Kerala. Throughout his journey, Nilkant not only observed his country, but took every opportunity to serve his countrymen. At the end of the seventh year of his journey, he entered Gujarat in western India and arrived at the village of Lodge. Even today, villagers like those in Lodge still comprise 80% of India's population. They live unhurried, peaceful lives. They recognize that this young yogi had insights beyond his 18 years and asked Nilkant to visit Swami Ramanand, the most revered guru of the region. The date was July 21st, 1799. The Swami was away, but his disciple gently insisted that Nilkant await his return. As he did so, Nilkant shared his knowledge of the disciplines of yoga which he had mastered by the age of 14. He sought no special treatment and quietly shouldered the same work as everyone else. People wondered what might happen when this special yogi met the master. When the two finally met, Nilkant's life was forever changed. Ramanaji had waited years for the arrival of his successor. Upon meeting the young yogi, he realized that Nilkant was the one, and he urged him to become the new leader. Nilkant was hesitant. He preferred the silence of the mountains, the freedom of nature. But Ramananji tried to convince him to stay in society and to help revive the values of life. As he listened, Nilkant realized that this was the spiritual home he had sought for so long. Nilkant had walked for seven years and nearly 8,000 miles, inspiring and guiding countless people along the way. Now, at last, his journey would stop. But the story of his epic journey and the lessons of his faith, friendship and fearlessness would endure. More than 200 years later, his life is still a source of inspiration. Nilkant grew up to be known as Swami Narayan, a great reformer of India. 
who ushered in rays of hope. He worked tirelessly to dispel the clouds of violent superstitions and social divisions to create a climate of peace, equality and unity. He helped revive the timeless mysticism of India, a land where the quest continues to understand the great secrets of life beyond our material world. Where devoted souls sacrifice all in spiritual odysseys to reveal the most important truths of life. Perhaps the greatest truth India can illuminate for the billions who live on this planet is the cherished belief that there can be unity in diversity, that we share the same sky, walk the same earth, breathe the same air, that we are a single human family. This is the essence of mystic India. <laughs>